Hello everyone and welcome to a movie based on an apparently acclaimed comic book story, Batman the Killing Joke, aka Batman the Killing of Bruce Timm's Credibility. Ah oh, yes, uh... babes, it's nice to be back in Gotham City and wait a minute, why are there two people having sex on a rooftop? Why is there a gargoyle watching? I don't, I don't have, know. Have you fucked up again with the TARDIS and wearing the hentai version of a Batman story? Come on. I don't, I don't know. Was this was that in the comic? Okay. No. For those no. Oh God, no. Okay, 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 folks. We're handling Alan Moore's The Killing Joke. Alan yeah. Moore, as a kid, well, okay, as I think a kid... this is actually our first product based on our more pro property we comment on. Oh, is it? I have a bit of a confession. As a kid, I was freaking terrified of Alan Moore. He looked like a monster who would be underneath <laughs> my bed. Now I just recognize him as a cynical old British comic grump guy. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a very talented writer, but nowadays... You just need to not piss him off, which is... Hard, admittedly. Not only that, he kind of sometimes has his head up his arse a bit, like to the point where, don't get me wrong, he has every right to be angry at how much of his creations have been desecrated in the adaptation world, but... I like Chief of Vendetta. Yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes he's a little too egotistical of his own work here and there. Granted, he did state that he actually does like the DC animated universe's take on uh, what well, do you get for the man who has everything? So, I mean, what better way than to have an adaptation made by the same guy who brought that episode? Well, who helped bring that episode. Enter Bruce, Bruce Tim. Tim. Bruce Tim, at the time of this movie, was a champion among DC fans. He was the main guy responsible behind the creation of what we know as the DC Animated Universe, which consists of Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Static um. Shock... Batman Beyond, else, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and oh god, I cannot remember the other one. Some symbionic most of, most titan of, most sort of, of thing. The, the basic point is, is the Kevin Feige of, of DC animation. So yeah, as you would imagine, when we heard that this movie was being in the making, people were pretty excited. Not only did it have Bruce Tim behind it, it got freaking Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. It's pretty much uh, again. If you haven't watched it, watch Dark World of Shadows review of it because it details also the behind the scenes stuff. But it's mostly known that this movie was made the big because Mark Hamill has been pestering people for years, especially at cons, and telling that he wanted to play Joker for this particular, adaptation of this particular story. This movie and was this actually big story. enough to actually get a limited theatrical release, believe it or not. Yeah, that, um, that actually happened around my neck of the woods. I didn't go see it, but it still happened. So yeah, what I'll admit, are... I was I was one of the many people actually very excited about this project. It had a super Same. team behind it, and as you've seen from our commentaries, DC... Uh, I gotta remember, this is DC Universe animated original movies, not DCAU, this is DCUA. Yeah, it's separated after their own version of Flashpoint. Yeah, yeah, because... yeah, yeah, DC Universe animated original movies are more often than not pretty freaking good. And, you know, I mean, okay, so what better way than to handle quite possibly one of the most acclaimed Joker stories into a movie. It's something people have been waiting for for quite a long time. It's something the fans have wanted. Something Mark Hamill definitely wanted, as mentioned before. Believe it or not, before certain other projects, he said he would only return for a Killing Joke film. Mind you, he ended up returning well before that, but he got his wish, lo and behold. For people uh, like... And apparently it was wretched. <laughs> oh yeah. boy, this is the first of two movies that would kind of desecrate Bruce Timms' uh, reputation. Uh, what was the other? Batman Harsh? No, Batman and Harley Quinn. Oh, that one too. <laughs> For people like Dwebs who, have, who are not familiar with the Killing Joke comic, it's regarded by many people, myself included, as the definitive Joker comic book. It's like it, it, practically every... Uh, interpretation of the Joker holds something to this comic. It's even comic the that's... Tim Burton nine, 1989 movie yeah. Yeah, holds but... uh, the origin story for Joker very Chris, similar uh, to Chris, this. Uh... Christopher Nolan also credited Killing Joke as one of the inspirations for his Joker. Um, the recent Joker movie clearly drew a lot from the Killing Joke as well. Um, it's it's basically the definitive Joker story. It's like the it's it, it practically every interpretation that came after. 
take something from this comic. It's it's the last, a, a yeah, true but, classic. A bit of exposition is down, necessary yeah, yeah, on the task, but for now, thing, let's yeah. actually get this started. So basically, yeah, start before the WB animation logo. Of course, and let the merriment in, begin. In three, two, one. There's a lot of interesting history behind the comic that this movie is based off of. See, Joker normally back then did not have a defined origin story. That sort of changed with The Killing Joke. Except not really at first. See, The Killing Joke was it's originally the supposed that to be... Love to pretend it's the uh, most yeah, uh, all right. Wow. This, uh... wow uh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Bob Bob was right. It's not how I expected the story to start. Yeah, okay. It's, okay. it's called The Killing Joke. And major, no point Joker. Of, major point of contention. Apparently someone in the team thought that the story, and I think simply the story wasn't making enough of a long a long movie, you know, even the one hour standard that DC animated movies have. So they tagged on a 20, 30 minute prologue. 31. 31, 31. minutes. That tell, talks about, a, a brief history about that girl in order to introduce property and give a bit of pathos to what will happen to her afterward. Oh, Lord help me, there's a lot to unpack here. All right. But first of all, the animation, it looks cheap, uh, to be honest, uh, at least so far. This, I can got, definitely... this, this got released in cinemas? Okay. Well, Honestly, in cinemas, yes. the, the character model look fine. It's the way they move in the contrast with the background that just feels wrong. You know what I'm going to say, though? The animation gets a lot I mean, better when Gotham we... Act... looks gorgeous in shots like this, but... You know what? I, you know what I'm gonna say the animation actually gets better when we get to the actual killing joke part too. It, it. I wonder if this was added at the last minute or something. Pretty much because they wanted to extend the running time. So well, get this. Uh, our villain for this initial segment, if you recall correctly, is called like Paris France or something. <laughs> yes, Paris is that, France. The this sad is part of the so course... stupid. The sad part as well is that Tara Strong is here to play Batgirl again, and the thing, I love Tara Strong. She's one. She's the the she. Oh God, um, drawing a blank right now. Guys, cover for me. I'm drawing a blank. Um, well, she also she's voices like, Harley Quinn nowadays. I mean, about them products. So I guess you yeah. could say Tara Strong is like the female Mel Blanc of our time and day. But that's what I was trying to say. The um... besides, um... at least I have some levity in, in not having every single superhero in voice by Jennifer Hale rem all, rem all the rem time. Rem rem well, remember, Joe, oh, Jennifer had, Hale um... usually does villainesses too. Yes, like Phoenix. <laughs> all right. Um, so, um, so Barbara, Barbara's the one who ended up getting put in a wheelchair, and she became the uh, mission control uh, person. Joba, right? what quote from Transformers should we use? Uh, um, hmm. it's a it's a cat it's a truck. So I guess Optimus Prime or something from him. Uh, yeah, anyway, guys, roll out. Anyway, is that is that yes, is that is that is, that, is Barbara Gordon the one who ended up being stuck in the wheelchair and became the mission control? Person? The one who yes, became worry, Oracle. I'll, exp I'll explain in due time yeah, that's because it, it, it's it's a it's probably the weakest point of uh, of the entire story, and unfortunately, Alan Moore is. A bit to blame, but not entirely. But again, again only due time. All oh, right, right, right. I mean, so I, I just remembered, uh, J T Tara Strong is the June foray of our generation. That's it. Oh. Uh, and and it's such a shame that uh, that she has to be wasted in this thing. But whatever, go ahead, Jova. Basically, the Killing Joke started off as a standalone story <laughs> here and there, and what? well. Let's just say D someone at DC Heads really liked the concept of it, and eventually they made it canon. And trust me, it was quite a way that they showed it was canon. Why was it awkward? Oh, ho, ho, ho. you have to wait much later into the story to see why, my friends. Basically, oh, Dwebs, what I usually do when it comes to this movie is tell people, here's what you do. Sk start this movie at the 31 minute mark, because that's when the actual killing joke a part of the of the killing joke starts. All right, let's Honestly, I, I'm, I'm when, when even when this movie was announced and everything, I was with a group of people that were like, "Was this really necessary at this point?" I get that Mark Hamill wanted to do this. I that, that part I understand. But aside from that, the killing joke has been referenced homage to death in our Batman. Oh, media. Maybe, maybe now we get to see the joke. Oh no. Now remember, our, our villain is that that dude called Paris France. You know, that'd be like, that'd be like, yeah, that, this, it'd be like if you had a, um, a movie about, I don't know, King, about Kingpin, 
but the villain for the first half of the movie is blood is was a little bloody thing, generic it's... guy in a suit. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the reason these first thirty one minutes were made was because of some someone like you who's not familiar with the with the comic book backstory. They could. But the thing is, they could have they could have used even like a member with a Conan family or Black Mask or Victor Zaza. But no, they created these original dork with no name. Oh, this, this guy is identity, no powers. Basically, okay. this guy is the nephew of crime boss Carlos Francesco, who's played by John DiMaggio. As for Paris France, yes, who's... yes, 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 we have Marcus. Sure. Fe- we have Marcus Phoenix as the gangster here. Oh, not only that, we 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 <laughs> hey hey, we also got Noah North in this too. Yes, because uh, that poor man really needs to fire his agent. Oh, also, this is Reese, played by. Oh my God! It's J. P. My... Karliak. You know, yeah. It, 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 in fact, try to, hey, it, try to guess what stereotype he is. Uh... In fact, Taylor, now that I think about it, Nolan North and Christina V. most likely have the same agent because, my... like, <laughs> oh, the guys, you can't. I can't believe it. It's J. P. Karliak playing Reese. You remember uh... J. P. Karliak, right? No. Uh... He plays Avi from Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh, of course. Jova, jo- jo- same from Steve Blunt, and I guess you were low until I forgot the major voice actors in that game. <laughs> oh, let's not okay, forget Matthew um, Mercer was in that. You see, you see, basically, this, like Till implied earlier, something happens to Barbara um, in the Killing Joe comic. However, since, and since so, so however, for people that are not as familiar with Batgirl uh, like you, the guys who made this film thought it would be better to have 30 minutes of extra material for, at, at the beginning uh, so you can uh, get to know Barbara a bit more before we get to the swing of things. And then let's just... Which, on paper, I can dig that, especially because the big, that's the biggest point of contention of the original story, the fact that uh, it's one bad case of preaching, and it was even executive mandate, apparently, by DC editors. Here is... So, the idea of expanding, of expanding a bit and having to get to know Barbara before that is a nice thought. It's just... Talk about not understanding how to do things. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's just say the characters are kind of dicks in the first 31st minutes. Other but... than that, I am, I am so not caring about this guy. Again, the, the, the reason... Oh, jeez. The reason why supervillains exist even in a situation like with Batman or, you know, or his bad family for Gotham is because it creates interesting stories. If you keep focusing on just simple mobsters with no personality whatsoever, uh... it's serviceable as a story, but it's not interesting. Babe. So we've got um, so we got Paris, France, who, who, who next? Berlin, Germany. Huh. Turns out our Mr. Mr. France is a bit of a creeper, too. Well, let's just say they wanted to make him as sort of a reflection. Hey, does this sound familiar? That person has this rivalry with a villain who is somewhat obsessed with them. Mm. Uh, that's sexist. <laughs> well, not Again, just that. I, I fear if we start a drinking game, we'll be dead uh, very soon. Let me just put it yeah, like this. Yeah, here's, here's, the first, here's another one of the first problems with this particular Barbara Gordon-focused little first half hour. Uh, they do the usual thing that uh, modern writers do when trying to make us sympathize with the female protagonist. Make all the men a- a- a raping assholes. Well, like, uh, let's... Look at that. This would be the moment. Uh, ideally, this would be still, you know, the fact that uh, she can still... Over... They, look, this dude is overpowering that girl. Like, no? Oh, okay, that works too. Still. Like... As a reminder, every single person trained by Batman, which by essential was trained by Rajal Ghul, has skills that outmatch even the basic criminal, like this Mr. France here. Basically, so, this it, is bullshit. Apparently, the reason is that she's losing focus. But for what reason, I wonder? Let me guess, she loves Batman. Hey, want a cappuccino? <laughs> Yeah, one thing you could have done as well, movie, if you really wanted to introduce Barbara Gordon to newcomers, you probably should have explained why she became Batgirl to begin with. Yeah, I mean... otherwise, if you want her to start as Batgirl already, you might as well showcase the fact that uh, she kind of had a sort of, at least of a brother relationship with the original Robin, which was Nightwing at this point. Yeah, basically, here's the basic point of it. As you can probably guess from her last name, yes, she's... Uh... 
uh, Jim Gordon's uh, daughter. Here's the thing. The, the reason she became Batgirl is because she admires Batman a lot and she wanted to... And, you know how Batman wanted to... became Batman to inspire the people of Gotham to rise against criminals? Well, Barbara happens to be uh, his biggest fan and actually uh, he inspired her to actually become a crime fighter as well. The problem is uh, Bruce is, the, is not doesn't think very well to that because she's still young and inexperienced and all that stuff. She hasn't trained like he has. Uh, let, let me guess. She's like, screw you, I'll do it myself, and that's how she gets. Um... What made you fat? Made you well? Made you fat? That I'll just let you see where things go. Anyway, here's part of one of the overarching issues with the Killing Joke that a lot of people have. The Killing Joke is supposed to be about a story between Joker, Batman, and Commissioner Gordon. Barbara Gordon is unfortunately a side casualty in it. The she's problem, not, unfortunately, not a character. She's a tool, and the, a bad one at that. The problem is that writers tend to try and make the Killing Joke a story about Batgirl, and let's just say that does not always work in a case. Like they make it about her trying to overcome and all that, except the problem is that they keep going back to it. When really we're all just about trying to no, move on and seeing wait, how wait, she wait, deals with that, it. What was that bit? What was with that line? And the, they say the gay scene is complicated. What does that have to do with? Yeah, that's the thing. It's complicated. The animation is so terrible in these shots. What yeah, happened? The, yeah, the animation is not the. Like Kitel said, the drawings themselves look fine. It's it's more the yeah the movement that it's a problem. Is it, was it like is it like Mask of the Phantasm where it was a last minute decision to put it in cinemas? So get this, it's Paris possible. France had his call girls literally wear a. Bat mask, just so that they could look He's like that. He's literally now fetishizing. Mind you, I can't believe this kind of thing can happen in the DC universe, uh, considering how fucked up some people. Oh, some oh, people and are British. There. oh, and he's British too, Joy. Despite his name being <laughs> Paris, France, uh, you don't even give him a French accent. Uh, seriously, what the fuck? Uh, this is, this is well, my John Luc Picard didn't have a French accent either. But th this is exactly also the problem, uh, as you're going to see later, Dwibs. Uh, there's going to be a tragic happening that where you're supposed to Oof. feel sorry for Barbara. The problem is, the guys who made this movie turned Barbara into uh, a bitchy, uh, annoying uh, version that's not Barbara. But so whatever. Yeah, I can I can tell that when she went off at that guy earlier. I mean, I, I get I, I I get that she's still okay. How old is she in this? Uh, how old was she in the Killing Joke too? Oh, not that much. Um, like twenty? Yeah, she was an adult, but not, but barely, basically. Yeah, yeah. I uh, get that she. I, I, I guess she's. For I get context, that she's still uh, young and, and still has a, 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 a teenage girl's mind of sorts, even though technically not a teenager. I get what you're going for, but at the same time, there are better ways of pulling this off. Go ahead. Also, too. for context, if I recall correctly, comic book wise, uh, it was around this time that she had stopped being being bad girl. And as soon as the story was made, they immediately jumped on the bandwagon of having her being Oracle because of what happened in here. Again, the executive mandate was apparent and very malicious in its intent. Don't get oh, me wrong. Is oh, or this is important. Yeah. I'm actually surprised we didn't make a story with Wonder Woman being the victim of one of these people. Yeah. Way to state the painfully obvious. Well, sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. Remember, we're all, I'm all about casting fear into the hearts of criminals. You know? How did you got the Batmobile on the roof? Dude, he's Batman. Also, he Cyborg on the newspaper. Cute. Yeah. I guess at this point in time, Robin's right. off with the Teen Titans. Alright, question, guys. Yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of other animated stuff, um, Barbara was in, you know, whether she was whether she was um Oracle or Batgirl or whoever, uh, how is she in those? Oh, she's great in Fine. Batman TMNT. 
Yeah, yeah, like, um, she, uh, uh, the, uh, the previous stuff, like, uh, if I remember correctly, Animated Barbara premiered in, also, in she one of the later the, seasons of the, also, of the she, Batman she, Animated Series. Oh, yeah, season yeah, three. She also becomes the official new commissioner in Batman Beyond. So. Sure, sure. She, was she already voiced by Tara Strong then? I think so. No, I don't think so. Oh, no? Tara okay. Strong came in to, re- she... to basically, uh, you know, replace uh, some roles. I think she was played by, believe it or not, June Foray in the Batman, I mean, in Batman Beyond. On. Oh, okay, cool. Well, th- 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 that's the thing to observe. Oh, no. Uh, the Batman animated series, as always, is your de facto place to go for great interpretations of the animated characters. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's a gift, the shitty car. <laughs> okay, how long are we into this movie now? Let me see. 15, 15 minutes. minutes. 15, 15 minutes, minutes and the Joker hasn't even showed up in this movie. <laughs> Exactly. Dude. Okay. This is, the problem. this is exactly what I keep saying. Dwebs. Here's why you watch this movie. Skip to the 31 minute mark and watch from there. And this is as good a point of time as me. Pages, but I shouldn't have to skip a long chunk of the movie to fully. I know. Oh, I, I know. I know. Uh, so trust me. I know. It's just that that's the thing. The, the Killing Joke movie that everybody came in to see only starts at the 31 minute mark. Basically, basically, like I said before, part of the problem with the Killing Joke is that writers tried to say, "Oh no, no, no! It wasn't a story about the Joker. It's a story about Barbara Gordon being crippled and then overcoming even it." Though, and don't even get me wrong. Is barely in it, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, so so far, so far from what I'm seeing here. The marketing should have been what's the story of Barbara Gordon's tragedy, also the Joker's in it as well. Starring the Joker. Oh, the ain't that cute? Series. He killed his uncle. Yeah. Death starring the Joker, you mean? Yeah. Also, who, who was that guy? Him, yeah, uh, Paris no, France's no, no, no. uncle, played so by John DiMaggio. Oh, months. and he was the biggest Marcus boss he... in Gotham. I'm sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Marcus, Phoenix, Marcus Phoenix got killed off screen, which means the Gears of War series ends. Oh, now. sure, you're the next big thing. I'm sure the Falcone family will be so happy about that. Oh, shit. Holy shit, the boss managed to defeat that. Ah! You know, I've, I'm, I'm, as, as, we're, as the time of this recording, I'm playing through Gears 5, so I'm not really in the pin. We have a lot of patience for bad portrayals of female characters right now. Oh, Gears of War 5. Have you gotten to, um... Well, I'll talk about it later, Jova. I'll talk about yeah, it. Okay. I, I, just, I, I was just making an, uh, a, a throwaway comment. I was going to say, I'm you know what I'm doing. Why were you with me the elevator? Jeez. I told oh. you not to come here. Actually, let me check instead who was uh, the composer for this. Uh... Okay, I will say one thing that's nice about this movie is how they replicate the look of costume Batman had at the time, where he had those cartoony eyebrows on his mask. That's a nice Christopher touch. Yeah. Christopher, Christopher Carter, Michael Mac. Kuiston and Lolita Ritman is. I have yeah, no idea what this is. Yeah, it's abundantly clear oh. that they were trying to mimic the actual look of the comic oh, itself. Oh, no. Of the Oh no. It's God. this scene. Okay, so uh, I I do think I've seen this clip on like reviewers and stuff. Don't say what's gonna happen. Let's just let this scene fold out. Well I already kinda of spoiled that for the intro, but whatever. You never tell this to Dick. <laughs> He's a commissioner, you moron. What? No! Dick's your ward! Well, he's more experienced than you are. Oh, you only like him better yeah, because he lost his parents too. Sounds really familiar. The one where you did to Jason Todd. Why are you giving this to that girl? I thought I thought you put her off the case not too long ago. She's off the case twice now, apparently. Metaphysical oh, so, BS. Because they're wondering, yes, this was R-rated, but they didn't use that. That correctly. was a bad line, and whoever wrote that line needs to be fired. God, the music is so good for this scene, but this scene is so terrible. Who's the composer, sorry? I mentioned this with three people who have no idea who they are. Uh, let me pull them again. Christopher, uh, Carter, with Christopher Carter, Michael McQuiston, and Lolita Ritmanis. Uh, oh, no. Uh, yeah, this is just... Why? Uh, you see, you see, Dwebs, to give you an idea, in the comics, 
Barbara is supposed to be a, a big fan of Batman, but like that's it, just a fan. Not oh an my god! Not, not, not Bruce, an what are you not, doing? But the, but the way, but the way they. Oh, they that poor gargoyle movie. has to watch what? it all. <laughs> <laughs> but the way, but the way they portray even... her in this, but the way they portray her in this movie, make, come, come, she makes her look like an obsessed, an obsessed fan girl. Uh, like not to mention the very questionable age gap between the two. Not to mention the fact that you know she's the daughter of one of Batman's best friends. I have no idea. <laughs> there she, even she says it. What the okay. hell have you done, Barbara? Now it's time exactly. to mention. Apparently, Bruce team has been trying to sheep. Uh, Barbara and Bruce for a long time. Oh yeah, but, but so far, but until this point, you just had to pick up the ins because they were present. I did personally didn't see them until it was too late because there's stuff in the Batman the animated series, part in the Justice League cartoon, part in Batman Beyond, and finally. This is the culmination. Bruce Team just inserted his own explicit rated fan fiction. I hope you're happy. And I can't believe I'm saying this, folks. This isn't the last movie where you'll see Bruce Team's fan fiction come to life. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Barbara and Batman banged up on the rooftops. Why are you having the Fantastic Four logo for your Hey, news? hey, hey, guys. Did you want to see that Joker movie? Well, too bad. Have Barbara and Batman getting in all of the roof. Oh, boy. Detective Harvey Bullock. He's in this movie, played by Robin Eck and Downs. Great. Wait, you didn't finish your coffee? Come on. That's a sad part, I can tell you from experience, Teo, that sometimes customers, for some reason, will order something, and hey, sometimes... Hey, I, I was not in your fucking business! Check, 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 check your privilege. How dare you want space in a relationship! I, te That's te not I can in tell your you. business, you bitch! Yeah, I know. Go on, te I, I can tell you, Teo, that of all the, deta the little details in this movie, sadly, that one is the most... Accurate and realistic one so far. Oh, because, uh, even, I can, if I get, uh, even if I get a shitty coffee, I will still finish it. And as a painter, I have plenty of customers say, uh, order a, a coffee and not actually finish Barbara. it, order a tea and not actually finish it. Uh, it's what much more waste, common. Than, uh, it, it's much more common than you. I agree with you. Well, as long as they get paid, I don't care. But uh, as long as I sorry, as long as they pay, I don't care. Uh, of course, but still. It's still <laughs> oh, this is cute. Batman's so embarrassed that he's actually avoiding Batgirl after. That. All star, we're on oh, the no, call. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> In case you're wondering, you're referencing a PSA call, well, publicity call me, but Batman and with On Star, uh, company tied to cars uh, and. Uh, Automatic system tied to them. So, if, if if this was an attempt to make me feel for Barbara for what happens to her later on, then judging from what I've seen so far, she lashes out. She kind Honestly, of proves it people. It? I, 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 Sorry, she on. proves she proves people right for throwing her off the case and uh, and intrudes in other people's business. Uh, ah. No, no, I'm sorry, it's not working. Honest, it was honestly, just sex, it, for God's sake. I mean, come yeah, on. Honestly, Dweebs, it's pretty clear that it was just... A, the, the whole idea of expanding the character of value was just a theme disguise for Bruce Wayne to insert his own... Oh, I, hang, you know, on, hang on, hang on, sorry. Sorry. sorry, I noticed the screen there. Apparently, they were talking for five seconds, even though it was not five seconds. Like, okay, okay, apparently the, anim and the animators and all Bruce Tim can't count. Exactly. Oh, God. Don't worry, Dwebs. Um, the, 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 uh, again, like I usually say with these things, don't worry, Dwebs. Uh, Barbara Gordon is not in this movie. I don't, know, I, 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 I don't know who this bitch is, but that's clearly not Barbara. Okay, okay. Is that the tech from Star Labs? Because the Batmobile is pretty resistant usually. Must be from Star Labs. You see, Dwebs. You fired again earlier, mate. You, you see, Dwebs, this is not Barbara Gordon. It's actually uh, Looney, get it, Warner Brothers, huh? Looney Sal Sally, uh, a, a woman who found a Batgirl outfit and she's cosplaying and pretending to be Batgirl. So That's you're actually... the same continuity <laughs> as, as all Star Banner and Robin. Uh... Considering how Batgirl behaves in that, I wouldn't be too surprised. Huh? Oh, God. I don't know which is worse, this Batgirl or the Batgirl from Aspar? Because, believe well, me, it's Frank Miller. The, when was the last time Frank Miller knew how to? write something even remotely that's the enjoyable. thing though he used to be an actually pretty cool yeah. guy he was great to the thing Jova, Jova, to. literally 9-11 happened uh, okay. um well well 
okay, well, well, maybe Robocop 2 and 3 aside. It's, it was better with Robocop versus the Terminator, at least. Uh, Hell, even with honestly, Robocop 2 and 3, you could say that those were quirky accidents, at least, and I wouldn't no, say just, they not, were Not just terrible. that. Uh, like, honestly, Graves, if you ask me, Robocop 2 and 3, especially 3, aren't the very, can at least be enjoyed on a comedy level, if you ask me. Trust me, Dwebs, there's way worse Frank Miller stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can I assure you. Let me you. just put it like this. After 9-11, Frank Miller started to get awfully paranoid, and now it feels like he's just in the point of being oh, look, senile. Oh, and now Barbara is acting exactly like uh, Zack Snyder's Batman. <laughs> uh, Peter, what are you talking about? It's not nearly gray enough. Yep, this is definitely the Frank Miller, Zack Snyder, Batman. Uh, 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 it... Okay, now we're having vegetable <laughs> joke. I know they're from the bad guy, but still. You know, dude, considering you're breathing copiously, that must be your time of the month. See, I can make a fancy joke too. Huh. Oh yeah, might as well also finish. Uh, sorry, might as well mention something to it. Uh, hold on. This scene. What have you become, Barbara? You've become like Red Hood, so he joined East Club. Come on. Basically, Come folks. Oh, he turned into Zuko. <laughs> basically, folks, if you haven't realized it before, basically what they're doing with Paris and Batgirl here is trying to make a reflection of Batman and Joker's relationship. Psychotic villain obsessed with the hero who feels that said villain is kind of... Well, okay, it shows how bad it shows how they deal with it differently, but that's pretty much what they made this guy out to be. Just a poor man's joker without yeah. anything that makes him entertaining. Get it? She keeps seeing couples. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I might as well mention this, uh, Dwebs. Uh, the killing joke is an Elseworld story, so technically it's actually not uh, canon. It's uh, just a what if scenario. Um. However, however, so so the origin story of the Joker that we see here is not actually the uh, canon. But however, it's an it's still a great what if scenario. Thing, so. Um, Pedro, okay, well, about that, as I mentioned before, well, Killing Joke well, actually well, was made canon. Yeah, it, it, oh, it was it, 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 okay. essentially it was lost. Now, back so in long, my day, it wasn't. So so many <laughs> so many people loved so many people loved it. Oh, there you go. So many people loved it that they practically canonized it. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I mean, it's a very good story. That said, canonizing it meant that Barbara had to be crippled in the main universe. Not just that, not just that, uh, it, 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 it's better the idea of having Joker with, with a more ambiguous origin story. That's the problem that I had with the Tim Burton Batman movie, the fact that Jack Napier was so straight-lined. See, like, uh, what, what, I, I always really appreciated... Um... One of the things that I really appreciate about um, the Dark Knight Joker is how they take some aspects of first personality from the Killing Joke, but they keep the um, they keep the the the, mystery, the, the, the ambiguity the, the ambiguity still. So they, they know, Christopher and Jonathan, sorry, Christopher and uh, his brother knew what to take and what not to take in particular. Well, basically, the fan base's recollection was, hey, maybe we could consider that the Joker's backstory may or may not be the truth that is until a little story called heart of hush pretty much confirmed that it was yeah. true when joker found out news about the guy who was responsible for a certain thing i won't say yet and basically will set out to kill that person so yeah pretty much okay in... i think it's about now okay oh, no. folks no, not quite what is it wait for it yeah, I think it's the rain now. Is I think it's, it's so okay. Like it so Bob, oh, oh, oh never mind. No, Barbara it's, still not, it's, it's not the gate for no. So, it starts off at so, the gate. So so Barbara quit being that girl. Yep. Exactly. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the actual Killing Joke movie. Yeah, in a bit. These are being seen like a transition between the two stories. Yeah, right now, remember the first shot of the comic is the one where we see that gate with the rain. But we still, it's it, it, we're almost there. Oh boy, wow. victim of the Joker toxin. Is that is that then Turpin? No, there must no, have been no. there must have been one no, of the most comedy. Hey scene. guys, I used to think my life was a tragedy, but turns out it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like I said before, this is Harvey Bullock played by Robin Neck and Downs. Hmm. 
Shouldn't they be more skeletal by Jesus. now? No. Hmm. It's. A, I think it's a recent thing. I think. Um... Hmm. How convenient. I'm half expecting this guy to just shoot Batman. Ah, you should. You know, it's funny you mention that. Harvey Bullock has an interesting relationship with Remember, Batman. Remember, Dweebs, um, aside from Gordon, most of the Gotham Police Department is corrupt. As well, fuck. I can't remember because I haven't really seen what shows of the police have gotten. Let's just well, say. I already sure. told you. Well, 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 well again, again, the usual thing it boils down to this the main reason why Batman teams up with Jim Gordon is because Jim is the only cop in Gotham that is actually. Uh, that refuses to be corrupted. Uh, like. Uh, Whereas all the others pretty much, you know, they eventually uh, uh, give in. Okay, Harvey Bullock is essentially a cop who in many continuities starts off as being somewhat corrupt. But we actually get to see his transition from a corrupt cop to being one of the most loyal police cops ever, especially to Gordon. Let's just say he's one uh, of the guys who butts heads with Batman a so lot. Important. We needed to see Barbara's ass. Now, Pedro, we need, we need to see how she got inside, otherwise we'd assume she teleported inside there. I, I guess. Okay, so now we have one All of right. our... It's right after this shot, if I remember correctly. There, there we you go. go. There's the first shot of the killing show. There you go. This. From this point on, this adaptation becomes basically a page-by-page -page dictation of the comic. That said, it has a few good changes here and there, and the writing becomes infinitely better. Yeah, most well, of the writing is lifted straight from the comic, which, uh, basically, this, from this point on, this pretty much becomes a completely different movie. So, this is Commissioner Gordon, played by Ray Waz. Yeah, and he still has that, um, that look, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, Two-Face coin. Harvey Dent, eh? Yep. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes. Name unknown. My favorite DC. <laughs> well, 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 I'll remember, Dwebs. Uh, very, no, pretty much nobody, most people don't know the Joker's real name. You know now because you've seen the Joker movie. Mm. But um, the Joker's identity is usually always a mystery. Ah, uh, here yeah. he is playing a card game. But yeah, Arthur Fleck, yeah. Boop. Oh, I see. It's the Tim Burton movie. In that case, he's Chuck Nature. Well, well, yeah, but usually, but whatever. Moving on. Yeah. Maybe we should hook up. Oh wait, no, oh, sorry, we already tried. We already tried that with, with that girl. So can no, this no, marriage be saved? <laughs> well, there could be another option, Batman. Maybe you'll both die naturally. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, Dwebs. It's like the Dark Knight said: uh, the immovable object versus an unstoppable force. It, it, this can only end in one way: one of them dies. Kind of love how in New Fifty Two they reveal that Joker has a Lazarus pit for this sort of stuff. Yeah, he's a, remember when he was built up as these like chaos so theories with Aunt Cotton? Oh. That's my hand. Oh. Yeah. Damn it. It? So there you go, Dwebs. As you can probably guess, the interrogation moment uh, from the Dark Knight was somewhat inspired by, um, as well, because of the whole the whole where are they thing from the Dark Knight is kind of inspired by this part as well. Yeah. Again, the writing is almost if it's one to one, to one and, it, and it shows because Alan Moore, there's one thing that Alan Moore is great at his writing dialogues. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> And as always, Mark Hamill is brilliant as the Joker because there's no other thing that can possibly come from him. How to describe the Joker in this movie? Well, imagine if Mark Hamill's Joker from the animated series was allowed to swear and be a lot more graphic with his violence. Not even more violent, just more graphic with the violence. Oh boy, the Joker finally shows up, but he only took 35 minutes. 
well, the other approval point. Well, I think we already had the interrogation scene, but yeah. But yeah, that wasn't mean. that wasn't the Joker then. Oh yeah, never mind. Sorry, I. I'm, I'm a kidding. killing joke, maybe. Ha <laughs> See the fat lady. Ha ha ha. And this there triggers a flashback. There you go, no, there, there go Remember how in the Joker he's tr he's uh, living with his mom. Um, the, the, um, well, that's it, they took inspiration from this comic. However, in the comic, it's his wife that he lives with, not the mom. Oh, okay. His pregnant wife, mind you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's the comedian in this one as well. You know, I love the irony here. She's the pregnant one, but he's the one who acts more like the pregnant wife in the relationship. <laughs> Isn't that funny? There, there. Oh, let me guess. Something happens and there is no baby? No. Well, the, 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 what me, could possibly go wrong? Similar to the movie Falling Down, the main motif of your story is what if you just had one Very really bad, bad day? day? Yep. Gotham's no place for a good upstanding citizen. Oh, Bloodhaven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bloodhaven, the one city that's worse than Gotham City. And yet, Dick Grayson is the one who handles that city. No, you can die. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. It would probably be. Yeah, it's the usual buzzer. Oh. <laughs> Let me guess. By persuaded, they mean that. Uh... Well, they have interesting means of persuasion. Sell me the property or I'll kill your family. Uh, uh. Uh, um Yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> does he have does he have the Eve does he have Joker magical powers now? Well let's just say uh, it's a little bit of material coated on his glove there. Oh it's also a, the, there will Ah be the laughing course, fish. So. Uh, well, Cliffs, remember how um, the, the the original backstory of the Joker is that he fell into a bag of chemicals? Um, well, yeah, but that changes. Uh, they, 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 did it in the they, they did it in the 89 movie, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, basically, it's kind of similar. Like, it, it's kind of, they, they have this thing where there's a Joker virus of sorts, basically. Oh, well, basically, in this case, um... It's sort of a special hidden joy buzzer he included. As you saw, um, you notice that small strap he was taking off? That's one of his custom joy buzzers. This it one probably this injected uh, that Joker exactly. venom into, into him. Is it the same guy from the Batman Brian, TAS Bri as well? Brian George. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think in TAS he was voiced by Efren Zimbalist Jr., but he passed away a while ago. Ah, uh, okay then. And I know him more for voicing Doc Ock in the two thousand in the Spider Man animated series from the nineties to two thousand Spider Man oh. game. Oh, oh great! This guy's, guy's first role was in the Care Bears movie. Huh? <laughs> goodness. But apparently, they, they background... see, in the comic, this is the first scene with Barbara. Yep. Yeah. At this point, she had already quit being Batgirl. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> it wasn't Colleen. Thanks, Rob. Mm. Bat ah, that's a little that's reference to Batman number one. Yeah, the book. Believe it or not, Joker well, literally showed up in Batman's first ever comic. Well, technically, well, technically at the time it was called Detective Comics, uh, Joker. Yeah. Uh, hi. I love that. I love There's that. There's the shot, iconic though. shot. The, 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 with the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> There you I go, was... Gibbs. That was that, 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 that's what the first, those first 30 minutes were all about, so you can feel sorry for her now. Uh, no, I don't. In the comic, it works because the, the, the Barbara of the time was actually likable, but, well, sorry, Gibbs, but you don't get to enjoy that same thing. Sorry. Oh, don't worry. In certain continuity, uh, Joker the book critic. Don't worry, Joker. In certain continuities, technology finds a way to give Barbara the ability to walk again. Yeah, basically, in one of the more controversial moves of the New Fifty Two, they actually managed to repair Barbara's spine and allow her to be Batgirl again. Unfortunately, Man, I don't didn't mind it because oh, also yeah, Dweebs is exactly going where you think, but uh, I didn't mind because Marvel does that with Professor X every five seconds. Uh, I've so... always uh, yeah, might as well bring that up, might as well since it's uh, I've always thought that ever since I read the original comic anyway. Um, I've always thought uh, has Alan Moore ever confirmed that or, or did confirm anything that I'm about to say? Because if if yes, by all means tell me. But uh, I've always, uh, um, what Joker was about to do to Barbara there, and yes, that was in the comic as well, Debs, uh, so don't worry. Um, I've always fought, fought. Did, he, did he take inspiration from Alex in Clockwork Orange? Because, you know, there was also that one scene from Clockwork Orange. It's you know, possible, so considering Alan Moore as a history of being super referential, but remember, the whole idea of doing everything to Barbara Gordon was an editorial mandate, so I do wonder if he did any of that with true grit and teeth. The official mm. word of God nowadays is that Joker only undressed her. He didn't actually do anything else. Not for this movie, Joker. Fortunately not. Oh yeah, well that's pretty much the... Wait, do they mention that? I mean, okay. Anyway, back to uh, Joker's backstory here. Yeah. Basically, in he order to make enough one money... one last job to get enough money. Basically, he used to work at a chemical factory here, which these guys want to help them navigate. But the in order to stay in disguise, yeah. he'll wear a red hood. Yeah, uh, you know, for a second there, it looked like a giant thimble. But That's kind of a reference to the fact that Batman fought this mysterious figure called Red Hood for his first couple of, you know, fights. Um, but uh, they never knew its identity. And so they sort of paraphrased it with the idea that the Red Hood was never a true identity, but it was something that was passed to particular gangster in order yeah, to confuse Batman. Um... And Joker was the last person who wore it before Jason Todd reinvented the identity. Because I can't, yeah. I can't imagine Batman under the red thimble sounding like a good movie. Uh, yeah, question actually: Is there a villain that uses has a thimble as a weapon or something? Uh, the fine, the, remind me what's a thimble, dweebs. Oh, it's a thimble. Oh. It's that thing that people in when sewing clothes too. That little, uh, uh, that little glass-like thing. Too, Basically, to you, a thimble thing. is a cup of metal plating that you put around your thumb to keep it protected while you're sewing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I get it. No, dudes. The only, the only story. <laughs> well, there's the only, well, there's the only story that I can think of where thimble is a big thing is Peter Pan. Or Cinderella. Okay, so, um... To be honest, Volkswagen ah, ha, 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 had a villain called oh, Volkswagen King. So oh, oh, the irony. Imagining his life changing and never, never being the same. Never telling a joke ever again. Eh. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the third day Joker. Pretty much.
But yeah, let's just say, a lot of comics these days like to give Barbara back the uses of her legs. Don't get me wrong, it's interesting here and there. The controversy is that some people think that it robs her of the development she had as Oracle and feels a little... pandering? It was, it, it was, not just that, it was abrupted for the, for the comics at the time. And again, there's the whole editorial mandate, including apparently Alan Moore received a note which was written on it, crippled bitch. Yeah. Ah, classy. But anyway, back to, you know, the whole thing with giving back Barbara the return of her legs. That's all fine and well. Problem is that a New 52 would happen at the expense of two popular Batgirls, Cassandra Kane and uh, Stephanie Brown. Stephanie Brown. Yeah. Which was previously called a spoiler. Yes, mm -hmm. there was a where's was yeah, a that's that's called that's the one, spoiler. That, yeah, that's the one just like when the thing is Remind me, Tio, um in the current DC continuity, is Barbara back on her legs too or is she Oracle I don't know. again? I need to check again. Yes, I'm Batman. Yeah, the idea is that Joker wants to do something with the dream. Mm -mm. He's turning it into a BDSM. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, I see this. Welcome guys, to this Joker Circus of Freaks. Pretty much. Also, Gordon you're, looks rude. You're, you're my new acquisition, Jim. <laughs> also, Gordon looks ripped. For an old man, that's impressive. Considering the job he has to uh, take the, part typical, in. Ty typical comic book designs. Yeah, 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 I know. It's usually the Joker who's always slick and thin. Oh, you can definitely tell Mark Hamill was waiting years to do this role. Yeah. When did this film come out? Uh, 2016. It's already four years old, jeez. So, let's go for a little ride. What the hell are you talking about? Philosophical stuff, Jim. You're all part of the equation. Sanity Claus sounds like some weird Santa Claus horror movie. It's the same. It's 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 actually another thing. Okay. Uh. Okay. Does remember that scene in the Dark Knight where the Joker says to to Bruce, "See, I'm not. Uh, see, I'm not uh, crazy. I'm just ahead of the curve." Well, yeah. it, it, it's it's another thing that um, Nolan took from uh, this. Good one of the thing, things about the Joker is that he's constantly trying to convince himself that he's not the one who's crazy. Everybody else is crazy. He's the one who's sane. You remember how he sort of makes Harvey Dent into Two Face, saying that he brings him down to his and Batman's level. That's sort of what mm -hmm. he has in mind for Jim Gordon here. He wants to prove his point. But I am wearing a suit and bow tie. Uh, oh, 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 look at that lips. He's going to wear a, a, a suit and a bow tie. Yeah. Well, but he already is. <laughs> well, I know, but, I know this, but uh, let's think about this for a moment. Like, uh, something's going to go wrong. He's already wearing a suit and bow tie. So... <laughs> oh, shit. Well, cried. It's very different. 
You're under arrest for being the Joker. Wait a minute. But I'm not the Joker yet. What do you mean? Basically, yet? no. It is a problem. The comic explains it better for visuals and all. They're explaining that his wife died. Yeah. Well, well to be fair, Taylor, this 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 also kind of uh, implies it. So, to be honest. And, th and they're doing this through visuals alone as well, uh, like in the comics. Uh, well, wow, what does she die of? She You'll see. She lost the will to live. No, <laughs> no. Well, rem well, remember this. She was pregnant, so you can assume it was some kind of uh, pregnancy Basically, she had an accident go. with baby the baby bottle, bottle healer and an electric uh, sword. So not only is his wife dead, oh, but yeah, so no, is no. his unborn child. Yeah, Christ, it's been so many years since I last read that thing. You know, Tio, knowing this now, do you think maybe there was a reason why Joker did what he did to Superman in Injustice? So this guy who just lost his wife and child, part of the things he lives for, is now being forced in on a deal that he was trying to get them the money mm. for in the first place. I don't know, maybe, maybe it was that, um, maybe it was that half hour prologue or something, but so far I'm not really feeling this movie. That's exactly it, Dwibs. Like, this was, that was the main point of contention for some folks. The first half an hour of this movie makes the movie not only feel like it loses focus on Joker, but it sort of disorients the conception <laughs> of how well one would view it. Ha! Cute little reference. I mean, it's not like they could reference um, Do You Bleed at this point yet, could they? <laughs> Wait, actually they could since this was released in 2016. Well, I was, but I'm pretty sure the script was already finished by the time, um, by the time B BVS came out. Oh, okay, it's totally bad when I thought it was the police. Hell, considering <laughs> it's the same year, Jova, I'm pretty sure by the time BVS came out, this movie was already almost entirely animated. I love how there's literally a protocol for this. Hey, Sal Maroni. Again. Who's voicing him? Rick D. Wasserman. <laughs> Get it? A little reference yeah. to how Batman mentioned to Batgirl how Paris France wasn't scared of her. Yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing. Ha 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 ha. Kangaroo Court. Yeah, that's another thing that um, that uh, the Dark Knight took from the Killing Joke as well. Remember that that scene where uh, where the where Batman was all uh, was sort of like, he must have some friends, and the, and the guy's like, friends? Have you seen this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so. By the way, do you know your daughter once shanked the Batman? What? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, okay, okay, I okay, wasn't, okay. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. Okay, okay, okay. No joke, honestly, though. That would have been the real way to get Jim Gordon to break. Hell, hell, you know what? Hell, you know what they could have done, Joe, that I think about it? What? Have, have him say that, except in, in the context of the movie, it's supposed to be a bad joke. You know, I know, uh, it's right? Just, it's, it's just a joker telling a terribly, horribly tasted joke, which would be great a great moment for him. And you could have that way the writers could have their cake and eat it too. Which is again another point here. It really shows how pointless that first half an hour was because they don't even really reference it in stuff where it could have been referenced. Yeah.
Psych! I'll be honest. Yeah, I mean, judging from the animation called I'm actually kind of <laughs> glad I didn't see this in cinemas. <laughs> The only reason this was released in theaters is because it's tied to such a prestigious comic book. Again, really there was the a lot of release. there was a lot of hype for this. Yeah, you can tell this was made before Harley Quinn was created. Basically, <sighs> yes, believe it or not, before Harley Quinn was a thing, Joker would regularly. Shag it up with call girls, one of which is voiced and by Carrie Walgreen. Is he actually raped Barbara here in this movie? Yeah, basically, it's always implied, but basically, word of God is that he did not rape her, he just undressed her. He wanted to leave it ambiguous for folk. Okay, here we have what quite possibly the moment everyone remembers from the film. Of course. Yep. And if there's one thing Mark Hamill is really good at, surprisingly, it's singing. A complete well, original there, song and dance there, tune. Is there, is there anything Mark Hamill is not good at? <laughs> I guess a good guy again. I can't um, think of a time he actually played uh, one. Make, making, a, making a crap holiday special worth watching. Oh. Well, Dwebs, Dwebs, come on. Like, I, I said he was a great entertainer. I never said he was a miracle worker. <laughs> 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 or someone who blinked. Come on, like, now no, you're just asking him to be God. Come on, that's, that's not really fair. I think even God's afraid of that holiday special. Oh, um, speaking of the people who created this movie, um, uh, obviously this film got a pretty, um, mixed, rep mixed reception from people. Um, many reviewers found the, apparently found the film more sexist than the original source material. Who, but they but they got harassed and flamed by angry comments. One such comment was from Brian Azzarello, the writer of this film, oh, who called a fan critical of this movie a pussy. Oh boy, right. Brian During Azzarello. a panel. Ha! Huh. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's gonna be that's gonna be a dearly more movie. The creators of the film being Pratt. You know, I am really glad I'm not one of the folk who defend this movie. Look, like I said, I may enjoy the latter half of this movie, but man, this former half is quite a buzzkill. I'm not gonna lie. That said, though, the song is nice. I did you get those photos? Yeah, I'm very good. I thought he had a, you know, um, a camera. On him, when he shot Barbara. An invitation. With compliments. Hmm. Cute. <laughs> eh, I'll be honest. Um, the cat, the the riding on a tram track scene from Red Dwarf is a lot more funnier than this, or, or better even. I know, right? <laughs> is 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 that Mark Hamill commenting on the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you mean after all this time, all this effort that I went to to get in this movie, and I get Barbara shagging Batman? Yes. I mean, that is really what... Okay, I get it, you know. They were afraid when this movie looked to be only four to five minutes long. But dudes, just run with it. You're a DC animated film, for Christ's sake. Those just things aren't often that video long. like all the others. What's the problem? And it's weird. A lot of direct-to-video movies look a lot better animated ones. Like I said, the animation does get better in the latter half, but still, I've seen a lot of DC animated movies looking better than this. There, you can be the Sorcerer Supreme with these. Uh-huh. So there you go, Dwebs. We're in a, a, a factory full of chemicals, so obviously you know what's going to happen. 
Oh boy. <laughs> Irony. Yeah, don't complain. Just, uh, you may have some trouble looking at stuff that's red on white with that. Again, it's like Jova said, that first half hour leaves you with such a bad taste in your mouth, it's hard to even, uh, uh, focus. That, it, it, it just taints it. It completely taints it. And like I said, it ties into the problem of writers trying to make the Killing Joke a story about Barbara Gordon. It's not really. Let's not try and pretend Have, like it, it is. Here's, a, here's an idea. Expand, up, uh, 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 expand upon the backstory of the Joker uh, further if you want to extend the running time, that would make a lot more sense. I know, right? But no, let's uh, let's put Barbara Gordon in the spotlight for some reason, even though she's like in the in the comic for like two scenes. Again, I cannot fathom why writers try to constantly go back to this for Barbara's sake when she was barely included in it. Like you know, we had apparently oh. we no, had just, Oracle I mean, apparently... already for that Sorry. stuff. Anyway, go on. Apparently, they were going to make a live action. Killing Joke adaptation with um with a guy named um with with some artwork by a guy named Phil Barassa. Oh, who, who's involved in Young Justice in the New Fifty Two movies? It might it, it might be animated actually. And there you go. This but is also all on this. But this also this is all on this is important. This also tries to explain why the Joker is so obsessed with Batman. The last thing he saw as the Red Hood was this hulking Batman figure, basically. He was killing it. So, I was say, but, um, yeah, no, no, no. but Watchmen underperformed, so they shelved it. All right, Desert, are you about to see the most iconic panel of the comic? I think that mask would have helped him. Oh. Uh, really. That mask there was very inconvenient. And there you go. Hold on. His response to everything that has <laughs> culminated mask. in this moment. And now the Mark Hamill, the Mark Hamill Joker laugh. God, he's still good at doing that. There you go. That, basically, this, that's the most iconic piece of imagery from the comic. I mean, yeah. you know, Are you still there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're here. There you go, Does. That's how it looks in the, in the comic. Uh, anyone out there? Oh, never mind. I guess I'll wait. Welcome back, Blibs. Hmm. All right. Are you there, Blibs? Okay. Sure, why not? The old the god is CGI. Okay, so okay, here's one actually, actually interesting yeah, here. This is something that was altered from the comic. Now Batman's gonna have a bit of a fight with the goons. In the comics, originally the goons just ran off because, you know, it's the flipping Batman. Here, they actually try and put up a fight. Which is, okay, that's actually a good way to increase the runtime. Give us some action here and there. You back with us, Bibs? Okay. Ow. Who says two heads are better than one? <laughs> Stop! Hammer time! Hmm. Oops. Oh snap, the Joker was a werewolf all along! I'm pretty sure there's a continuity where that happens. Yeah, there's a continuity where he's a vampire, a continuity where he's a vampire hunter, a continuity where he actually started off as a police commissioner and goes on to be a police commissioner, while Batman and Catwoman are like the Bonnie and Clyde of Gotham City. Oh boy, here we go. Just 
Typical mm. with this acid. So despite also, Joker, so despite yeah, so Joker's on. best efforts, Jim Gordon still remains cool. on the level. Hey, Hi. Uh, sorry about that. Must have sort of happened. Sure. This is definitely one of the pinnacle moments of it. It shows that no, Joker is not right that the average man will snap just because of one bad day. Yeah. Again, that's one of the, again, going back, that's another thing that the Dark Knight took from Joker, where Batman's like, why are we trying to prove Joker, that everybody's as screwed up as you? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a, so, that, so you, go, see, you can't take things from this comic without necessarily doing what this movie does. Ugh. Hey, here's the solution, just cut off the first 30 first minutes for this. Like, don't get me wrong, I get it. You wanted to give fans a nice, meaty, well, meaty by DC animated movie standards, movie based off of the killing joke. You know what? That's fine. But there are better ways to extend the runtime than how you did with this. Basically, uh, Dweb's, uh, that laughing scene, that's how mm -hmm. it looks like in the comic. And I'm showing it right there. Yeah, audience, feel free to look it up. You can see it on Google Images. <clears throat> Wouldn't you like to know? You're closer. It's funny close. you mention a brother. Just wait a couple of years and someone will tell you. Ah, uh, good old Thomas Wayne Jr. Whoop. Too bad! You officially have a backstory, courtesy of DC. Bonk. Oh boy. So this is where um, Rapunzel got it from. <laughs> so there you go. Because uh, I'm Batman. <laughs> so there you go, the episode that line huh. from the dark. <laughs> 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 Well, that's one of the best ways to insult Joker. Imply he ain't funny. And let's rub some salt in the wound, shall we? Hmm. Click, click, click. Okay. Wrong gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Batsy, that's half for fun. Exactly. Mm. 
Maybe the next little story. Yeah, Dweebs, this is probably the most humanity we'll see out of Batman like now. <laughs> Still, leave it a lot of more to say something like this. <laughs> no. It's too late for me, my son. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> wrong, wrong Mark Hamill movie. It's too late for me, brother. Well, how about a joke instead? What do you get when you cross a mentally ill oh, little... Oh, sorry, man. wrong guy. Okay. Symbolism. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit that was actually funny. Even that was actually that, funny. And, that, and yeah. there goes a gentleman, the titular killing joke. Yep. It actually gets it's even also, Batman to laugh. It's also particularly because in the comic it le it's left ambiguous because it looks like Batman is actually killing Joker. Don't worry see. though, when they made it canon, they basically had a scene oh, that course, so. confirmed that, nah, they just left and then he hauled mm. him off to jail. But yeah, that's how the story actually ends. What? what? That, well, yeah, so not in... Not. Well, not in this version, Tio. They added a little something of course, extra. Of course, there's a post credit scene. Yep. But still. Well, that's well, the thing, guys. Remember, the original comic, back when it was first made, it was made as a what-if scenario. So Alan Moore <laughs> decided to leave it ambiguous whether or not Batman decided to kill the Joker. Yeah. Since it wasn't meant to be followed up with a sequel, because, you know, it was just a one-time what-if scenario thing. Alan Moore thought, you know what, let's just leave it ambiguous... Uh, the, uh, whether or not uh, he can do Mind you, Dweebs, he does that, uh, Mom Moore does that for every story that is not part of the main canon. If he has to do, sorry, if he had to do something that was integrating it with stuff like For the Man Who Has Everything or whatever happened to the, to the One of Steel, he does bring proper conclusions to them. But yeah. Oh my god, is this actually Barbara Gordon now? Where have you been? There's been this awful person who's taking your place, Barb. Yes, Looney Sally um, was this uh, cra escaped crazy mental patient <laughs> who found your bat uh, outfit. Um, did you manage to recover it from her? I guess in one of the actual good extensions, they actually do include the little thing to show that Barbara is getting better. Well, in the sense and that, now she, and now she's the and now she's the female protagonist from the Steel movie. Basically, <laughs> With a new she's... identity, Oracle. Yep. Let's just say Oracle is flipping awesome. Like, for as much as we do hate what happened to Barbara, Oracle is definitely well received. Like, you that know was it's... because uh, that was because remember the, the the choice of crippling Barbara pissed everyone off at DC, excluding the executives. So we, everyone tried their fucking best to savage the situation. Yep, and they really did end up liking Orko. I mean, heck, to the point where people actually had backlash to Barbara being reverted back to Batgirl Not for to mention, Super Science. Cassandra Cain was a, a, a decent alternative afterward. As was Stephanie Brown, too. After yeah, she right. had so been was... Robin. So that was the Killing Joke animated film. Lives. Since, since you're the more inexperienced and uh, it seems you may want to say something about it, go ahead. And uh, I, I don't know. It's Again, I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure a lot of my ambivalence towards this movie was pretty much that of a bloody half hour opening. Oh, trust but, um, me, that's pretty much you and the majority of the audience. Like, even if you're a comic book what? fan, but um. But the rest of it, um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've seen other better stuff recently involving the Joker. This just, this just wasn't all that impressive. This was still animated honest. in Asia. Huh. It really um, does make you wonder. This, this just, 
I wasn't really all that much all that impressed to be honest. The animation looked like it were made for like fifth, but uh, but it was even though the stuff that was the killing joke, it was like it looked like it were made for like oh my, a couple of thousand dollars maybe. Um, the the the, the characters are just um, there. I mean, I mean, I mean, I thought the acting was fine for the most part, especially Mark Hamill. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I get what they were trying to go for. You know, um, it's a bleak story, and that I get it. But um, I think what with all the stupid stuff involved with the bloody sex scene, um, <laughs> Barbara being an absolute yeah. bitch early on in the movie. Yeah. yeah, that's part of the problem. Part of the weight of that it's, story. It's not even. It's not even darkly fun. It's just. It's just. Boring. I, 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 I'm sorry. I thought this movie was just boring. I don't blame you. I mean, part that's, of part of the charm of the killing that's joke it. is. I mean, even yeah. even if you take out the opening half hour, it's still just you know a bunch of a bunch of people doing things and uh, and 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 again, you know, I'm 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 still not a, I'm still not fond of that odd ending because it, it. I mean, abrupt endings. I don't think really work for, you know, this kind of medium, I think. It worked for the comic, but yeah, not for the movie so much. Yeah, I think that's the problem when you uh, take, um, when you take movies that aren't, that didn't move and make the move and don't really change stuff that might not work for a moving medium. Yeah. That's the big problem. Adapting a killer joke into a movie we should require something that where, yes, you keep the essential core and the themes and all that stuff, but you have to actually do exactly what it what an efficient is supposed to do. Adapt it. Make changes because, where changes are necessary. Exactly, because, uh, ex but, like I said, how about expanding upon the character of the Joker so that it's much easier for someone like Bibbs to be invested? That would have worked. But no, we can't. We can't have nice things. Let's have some, have have bat sex. Like, go ahead, Joe. Finish. Yeah, it's just. I, don't know. I mean, how that 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 sex scene was just squicky. It's one of the it, worst sex scenes in like don't, anything. Don't worry, Webs. Don't worry, Webs. You're in the majority when it comes to that. You're fine. <laughs> it's just. No, nah, that that's my takeaway from this movie. This movie isn't even all that fun. You. Sure. you whether whether you had the opening half hour bit or not, maybe maybe they fucked up the adaptation. Maybe it maybe it wasn't all that exciting a story to begin with. It's it's I I didn't like it. I guess Dribs, you could I mean, say. I mean, it's I mean the only I mean the big benefit to this film is that it's short. But again, like I say, it doesn't it doesn't really say a whole lot. <laughs> I... All right, you done? Yeah, you were gonna say something, Jeremy. I guess you could say in a sense, Dribs, that, you know, when you get down to it, this movie is essentially, okay, it's one half terrible filler, and while the other half is a perfect one-to-one -one recreation of the comic, except for save a few things, that just leaves it to be a watered-down version without the proper alterations that normally you see in these animated movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's it. I, I, I didn't like it. I can't. Okay, you mind if I go on, Pedro? Uh, uh, yeah. See, here's the thing. Here's what you. Here's the big problem with this movie. Okay, we've already. Everybody's already commented about how the first 30, half hour is garbage. It's terrible. Everybody's already talked about it. I don't need to bring this up again. Everybody already knows that the first half hour of this movie should die in a car fire. <laughs> so, so I don't need to go through that again. The big problem with this movie, even counting the um, the last forty minutes of it, after the the, the prologue, Barbara, uh, the the, the Rooney <laughs> Sally prologue, as I like to call it, um, the big problem with this movie is that instead of actually taking the comic book and actually adapting it, uh, the key word being adapting it into a movie, as in take the core elements and the overall important scenes of the story and incorporate them in a larger story that fits the film medium and enhances in, uh, the themes of the comic. Um, it, instead, the, the filmmakers decided, no, let's literally, outside of a, a couple little details here and there, like Joe mentioned, let's literally recreate all the panels of the comic 
in the face. And while that sentiment is uh, might uh, here's a here's the problem when you do that. When you do that, all you're really doing is creating fan service for coming. Oh look at that! They're doing the that shot exactly like it is in the comics. See, here's the problem when you do that. See, it's a one scene wonder trick. What is this? Uh, uh, to quote Antoine de Saint Exupéry, what is essential is invisible to the eye. Yes, you replicated the look of it, but you. But here's the thing, uh, by a but by, by doing it, you didn't transition the actual soul of the comic. But the the real adaptation of this thing should have been a ninety minute, uh, or at the very least one hour at uh, at the very least, expanded version that expands upon what's already there instead of adding meaningless shit with Barbara that doesn't belong here. Mm-hmm. Instead of expanding upon Barbara, uh, Barbara's role, because again, Barbara is not really the one we're supposed to fear for. It's Jim Gordon that you're supposed to feel uh, f- fear for. Uh, so here's what you do. Instead, expand upon um, the Joker's backstory <coughs> by uh, having a bit more with his wife, by making again, uh, kind of like what the, the the recent Joker movie did, where it expanded upon, yeah, they changed it so that it's, it's his mother instead of his wife, but outside of that, what they did with the Joker is they expanded upon the backstory where we see more of pre-Joker Arthur Fleck, you mm-hmm. know, where we, we get a true insight into him, into why he chose to become the Crown Prince of Darkness. Uh, they should have done something similar with this movie, but they didn't. Instead, they limited themselves to just replicating every single page, and it doesn't really work. That worked for the comic, not so much for the movie, because the movie, well, uh, movies work differently. And they should have just, instead of just doing fan service for comic book fans, as a comic, as a big fan of the original comic book, I would have much preferred a proper adaptation that introduces this story to a new generation rather than just seeing visual fan service to me, to be honest. Visual fan service to me is not impressive to me. Capture the soul of the story, that, 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 now that's impressive. See, kind of like, okay, so think of it like we've already commented on this movie, so I can talk about it. Think of it like Asterix and the Mention of the Gods, uh, the CGI animated film by um, Louis Clichy and Alexander Astier. Um, they took a famous Asterix comic book, and while the comic book is, in, while the movie is incredibly faithful to the comic book, it expanded upon it, introduced two new characters, specific romance they are kind of there to add a little bit more heart into the movie so that it adds a little more to it they expand upon certain scenes uh they even have new scenes that give the the thing a bit more meaningful like for example that scene that i pointed out in our commentary where the the gauls are about to destroy the 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 dominion but then they see all the romans and they're fine while it is in the comic in the comic it's just a, a very throwaway scene oh okay there's uh, there's civilians there however the movie took advantage of that to have a little good character moment where the characters feel conflict the, the goals I mean again it's a great way to expand upon what's there and add more heart to, to the story that's the angle these filmmakers should have gone with take the original comic expand upon it and tell a story that lasts uh, that fits the movie format and actually uh stays true to the spirit I, to me so basically page what you're saying is to make the inessential essential Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, the little prince joke, Theo. Just so, just so you know. Yeah. Uh, that's what Joe was making. Um, the basic point is this. Uh, again, you should have. Uh, this is the big problem. The people who made this movie thought, okay, here's what we do. Okay, again, let's take away the first forty minutes because I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to talk about. It. Um, Yes, you, yes, congrats. You're you're replicating the comic book panels. Okay, that's cool. I argue I, we don't even do that if you have to be honest, because the animation looks so putrid. Well, sure, I I I know I agree with that. Too. I'm talking about in terms of the way it's the way it's shot, the angles, the overall stuff. Like uh, you can tell they're the trying to replicate and everything. They're trying to literally put the comic book on screen. Uh, terrible animation aside, that's what I'm talking about. Um. Okay, good job. Here's the problem. I've already read the comic, you know, and even for those who haven't read the comic, there are better ways of putting this into a movie because doing the, this way where you literally put the comic book on screen, 
sometimes it can work. It worked with the Tintin cartoon because the Tintin cart 90s cartoon is basically just the comics put on screen. Yes, there's, a, there's some. There's, there's sometimes they deviate here and there in some scenes, but for the most part, it's basically just the comics put on screen. But and that worked. But that doesn't that that doesn't mean it's going to work with every comic. Like a comic, especially a, a typical superhero comic from Marvel or DC, because those comics tend to have a lot more intricate themes, whereas Tintin was just a simple adventure serial type of story. So it doesn't really work. What I wanted is something that's expended upon and uh, the, the backstory of Joker, and why not have a little bit more scenes between Batman and Jim Gordon so that we can get a bit more insight into Jim Gordon's character so we can feel sorry for him later. That's what the, the filmmaker should have done. Instead, let's no. They decided to focus on Barbara Gordon, who, in the grand scheme of things, in the comic, is just there to get shot. Uh, so it it's just it was just a complete erroneous adaptation. This adaptation was terrible. They should have taken something akin to the Dominion of the Gods adaptation. So yeah, terrible. Like it. And, and the sad part is that a lot of people, like we have just testified, that a big problem with this movie. Is that it will probably alienate people from the original material, from the source material, because it makes it look so terrible. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. Uh, adap adapting source material is not as simple as oh, let's just put put the thing on the screen. There you go, that works. No, it's not that 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 approach can work, but not always. You have to be smart about how you do these things. You can't just uh, take the easy way out. I've said before oh, yeah. that Alan Moore can be a bit of a snob, but I will say this. I do not blame him for having vitriol things to say about certain Doesn't adaptations when they turned out certain ways. On these subjects specifically. All right, so that was it. It's terrible, and I hate it because it completely... It, 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 now it's, it, makes a, it makes it a lot of harder now to... Uh, because the definitive adaptation of the Killing Joke most likely will never happen now because of the taintedness of this one, and that's why it's I hate this so much. Go ahead, too. Oh, actually, I was gonna go next. Oh, go go ahead. Whoever was gonna next. Go let me start up by saying I think the most distressing thing about this movie is that this is the DC again, not the DC animated universe. This is the DC universe animated original movie series like they have gotten these things so right so many times since the start way back in the day like as of the time of this recording there are no less than 30 of them out and most are pretty much big hits so more to come too. oh yeah one of and them to you oh yeah i thought you'd be excited for that one but yeah i mean that's sort of the thing is like oh you would think you would think that they would be able to get the killing joke of all things right. Like, seriously, the killing joke is one of the essential DC stories here, especially even more so after they made it canon. And, you know, when we heard that this was going to be a DC Universe original animated movie, we all thought this would be good because they, for the most part, have done good. Ever since their first project, Superman Doomsday, it's pretty much been hit after hit. Justice League, The New Frontier, Batman. Okay, Batman Gotham Knight was a bit different, but nonetheless, stuff like Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, all those, you know, you have still are based on comics. You know what they did? They told the story from the comics, but they expanded them. They changed it so that, you know, they'd be more suitable for a movie viewing audience. You'd think that they would get the basic things, and, and this wasn't just any team. This was Bruce freaking Tim. The guy who helped give us uh, the glorious DC animated universe. It's not to say he was the only one, but he is... He's kind of like the Kevin Feige of it, pretty much, in that sense. Like, hmm. And like I said, believe it or not, there's an even more embarrassing project from him, which we'll be looking at at a later date. But this movie, let's talk about this movie. Okay, the first 30 minutes can pretty much be summed as Batgirl is feeling terrible and she wants to bang Batman. And mind you, for the sex scene, it was kind of like she forced herself onto Batman first, just saying. Now, why they zoomed up to a gargoyle watching the deed? Uh, my headcanon is that one of the gargoyles from Gargoyles had to witness it. Well, Jova the Shadow the groping her ass was essential, mind you. Oh, God, that too, yeah. But let's not forget that she was pretty much initiating the acting, so it's not like she wasn't consenting. Ugh. 
Not that that makes any of this okay, mind you. God. Um. Yeah, um, Paris France is pretty much a poor man's joker. He's literally just made to have a sicko relationship with Batgirl just to show, look, this is something that's a preliminary event to foreshadow what's going to happen between Batman and Joker because we totally needed a half an hour for that and what's supposed to be Joker's own story. God. So that goes. So we get to the actual story here. And, okay, I'll say this, throughout this movie, I actually did enjoy the music for this. Uh, good job to the composer. That composer being... Three, three composers. Oh, three right different right composers. Right. You were saying? Three composers. I mentioned them previously, I don't know, I don't know any of them. Right, Christopher Carter, Michael Mikushan, and Lolita Ritmanis. Mm -hmm. Good job there. You definitely helped this movie out a lot. That said, the acting is phenomenal for this. They've got a pretty great cast in there. Mark Hamill, as per usual, excels. Kevin Conroy is a joy to listen to. And bless Tara Strong. Despite the terrible dialogue she has to deal with, she still gets the role well. Though I can't unhear Twilight Sparkle with her voice here in this one, I'll admit. Interestingly enough. Um... Okay, parts I did like. I did like that they added in certain action like Batman fighting the goons instead of them just running away like in the comics. See, that's a proper way to actually expand the movie here. Give it some more action here and there. And, okay, they are very faithful to the comic. To a fault, even, per se. Yeah, that's the thing. Except for stuff like Joker's song or the fight scene. You're pretty much getting Killing Joke... Brought to you on the movie screen, nothing really changed, which is kind of a missed opportunity because you could have expanded this a lot more. Like, maybe actually show what happens after Batman and Joker yuck it up after that joke. Like, that would be an interesting thing to see, especially since Killing Joke is pretty much now canon anyway, so heck, why not? I mean, it's nice that you showed Barbara becoming Oracle here, you know, showing that she's now a proper character again. But it's a shame we had to suffer for so much to get to this. And, again, what can I say about the Killing Joke part? It's literally Killing Joke. A good story, mind you, but it feels a little awkward here. The animation is not the best I've seen for a DC direct-to-video movie. And then, mind you, this one actually got a theatrical release because of the weight of it. I mean, I get that they were treating like their typical fear, but maybe you could have brushed this one up a bit more? Maybe given it a bit more of a budget here? Or maybe they should have just kept it 45 minutes and worked on the animation. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, Joe. But those first 30 minutes, the money we wasted on that could have been spent in animating the rest better. I want to know specifically how much money went in specifically to the scene of Batman and Batgirl having sex. Like... Just imagine the money put towards that scene. That scene in particular. <sighs> but yeah, pretty much at the end of the day, this is unfortunately a clumsy misstep here and there. What should have been a slam dunk ends up feeling like, well, I don't want to say homework because I at least get some satisfaction out of finishing homework. Uh, the first 30 minutes is like... Um... It's like, again, it's hard to think of something to compare it to because more often than not, I get satisfaction out of finishing something. There was no satisfaction out of finishing those first 30 minutes, just a sigh and a groan at best. But yeah, I mean, okay, undeniably, that sours the experience of the movie, but even without that, okay, so the first 30 minutes are pretty much terrible. And, well, let's pray to God our audience really, 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 really loves the killing joke and wants almost nothing to change. Because, yeah, it feels like they ran out of tricks for the part that actually matters. Mind you, it is portrayed rather well here and there for the most part, but it does feel like they could have made some alterations to make it better. Or at the very least, somewhat more, and I don't want to say coherent, because for the most part it is coherent, but more entertaining per se. Again, show us more of Mark Hamill yucking it up as Joker. Show us more of Joker's backstory before he becomes the Joker. Heck, give us more Mark Hamill songs. Those are a blast to listen to. At the end of the day, this movie is gonna be one of the biggest missed opportunities ever. 
I mean, on the one hand, it was part of what got us Mark Hamill back as the regular Joker. So I guess there's that. Aside from that, though, oh boy. like I said, this is one of, but not the worst thing that would desecrate Bruce Timm's uh, reputation. But that's for another story. Tio, close us out. Right. Now, to me, this is the worst of the DC animated movies so far, at least. I have still yet to see Batman Hush, but I heard that one sucks too. Good to know, I guess. Um, still, honestly, I question it's uh, the necessity of making this uh, from the get go, and I'm still questioning now because I do believe uh, uh, the killing joke is one particular story referenced by and adapted in some kind of way already in other media. So, making this adaptation outside from making you know, making Mark, Mark Hamill happy for a few seconds, like. I don't understand. Like I said, again, first, first 30 minutes are pointless and potentially even more disrespectful um, compared to the message that they want to bring. And the animation overall is just putrid to look at. Like, I'm sorry, there is no way around it. For some people we commented on, Batman Ninja, regardless of the fact that it may be an original story compared to an adaptation of this one, that one is, is supposed to be CGI anime, but it is an infinitely more higher production value, better animation, and even plays with its art styles. This one, this one doesn't even fucking try. They have such a scrap budget. They outsource it to some, in a good time, jet lag production fashion to an, an Asian studio. I hope it's still part of DC, the one that uh, helped with the Batman animated series and stuff, because otherwise, oof. Mm. It's that, uh, and they did the bare minimum when this should have been glorious to look at. Again, it feels it, it tells me that Bruce Team just wanted to insert his own fan fiction and care about nothing more than having Mark Hamill play the Joker for a few minutes. That and otherwise did not care. And honestly, again, like I said, due to the themes it treats, uh, you may notice the by how the dialogue is presented with but Alan Moore has a particular way of writing dialogues, as I mentioned. And it's unconventional compared to the traditional DC stories. You normally the Joker sure, the Joker sometimes dwells into philosophy, but he's particularly chatty about it in this part in this story, tied also to his origins. So it is unconventional and for this very reason I don't think this should have been adapted in the first place. Um or or at worst just, or at best, just have it like the other medias do, and have it just be slightly integrated or be slightly referenced by, especially because it helps with the ambiguity of the, the, the origins of the character. Otherwise, they should have stayed in the comics. But that's pretty much it for me. This was just awful. So, so um, wow, that was, that was um. Positive. Yes. So that that was that was that that was the killing mood. Uh, sorry, the killing joke. Um, That's it, though. Will... It, it it doesn't have to be a bad end, though. Basically, after the killing joke, basically they went back to making good DC animated original movies for the most when did, part. When did, when did Batman v Harley Quinn come out? Let me check. It came out in. Do, 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 well, Joven Batman and Hush came after this, and again, from what I heard, it's still bad. Wait, well, no, no, no. Not right after this one. Well, not right after, but it's still after. I'm cataloging <laughs> what came after, you know, this and the near future of it. Basically, well, after this came out. Batman and Hush, I think, was 2018. No? I'm, ta I'm talking yeah. about in the near future pertaining yeah, anyway, to Batman, that. Batman and Harley Quinn was the very next year. Yes, the very next year, but don't worry, there are other movies that came out before that. There was Justice League Dark, that was good. Teen Titans The Judas Contract, which was flipping awesome. And then Batman and Harley Quinn. Yeah. That said, though, we're back to good movies, seeing as how the last movie that's been released was Wonder Woman Bloodlines, which people loved. I can only hope the Batman Red Sol or Super Superman Red Sol <laughs> will be good enough. So. Oh, yeah. 
I have high hopes for that. There's also a Justice League Dark Apocalypse War coming out soon, which is funnily enough a sequel to Justice League Dark. And then there's also Superman, Man of Tomorrow coming about. That said, though, the majority of these movies are still good, as you've seen in our commentaries like Superman slash Batman Public Enemies, Green Lantern First Flight, the animated Wonder Woman movie, which was great. Oh, and I can't wait to show you guys All-Star Superman. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll see if hopefully for something for something better, hopefully. Yeah. Ciao.